Hello and welcome to the last training of CGTN. I'm Zheng Yibin in Beijing. Well, this afternoon we're at the office of the uh, CGTN uh, giving this live streaming because China is going to launch the core module of this first space station in a few days. And we're going to discuss about what kind of international cooperation in it in the past, present and in the future. Joining me now in the studio is uh, Mr. Xu Yuensong. Uh, the Director General from the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, and also they call uh, Bekust, and is an administrator of international relations of the European Space Agency. Welcome, guys. So uh, let me start from Mr. Xu. Uh, we in front of us there is a model of the Tiangong, the China's first space station. So in a few days we are going to launch the core module. Please give an introduction to this. Well, yes, <clears throat> the core module will be launched by end of this month. It is the uh, centerpiece of the Chinese space station. Uh, before that, we have launched already the Tiangong 1 and Tiangong 2 for experiments. Uh, Tiangong 1 has re entered the Earth <coughs> uncontrolled, but Tiangong 2 has successfully conducted a number of experiments, including uh, in orbit uh, uh, fueling and microgravity, in microgravity environments and transfer of cargoes and uh, docking and rendezvous technologies, uh, man manual and automatic. So all of those are uh, mature technology that is based uh, by this new uh, construction of the, uh, the space station. So the Chinese space station uh, will officially start building uh, by the launching of the centerpiece, the Tianhe, uh, by end of this month. The Tianhe will be uh, the connecting part for uh, the future uh, uh, fuselage uh, like uh, Wentian and Mengtian, which are another two connecting parts for the uh, space station, uh, as well as the connecting uh, capability for, uh, for, Tian, for Shenzhou, mm -hmm. uh, manned missions. So the station will be manned uh, maintainly, uh, permanently by astronauts, and also it will be supplied by cargo ship, which will also be followed next month. Mm -hmm. uh, that cargo ship will not only provide the logistics, but also fueling of the Tian one segment so that it will maintain in orbit uh, uh, around 400 kilometers above the Earth. Hmm. And, all, uh, and also we know something about <coughs> the uh, Mr. Carl Berkist um, because he is, he's an administrator of the international re uh, relations from the ESA and you've been uh, you've been following this project for a long time and you've been uh, cooperating with China on the, how both sides the train the astronauts from each country. So from your perspective, um, what's going to be the future, the outlook of the, the astronauts from the European uh, countries to work with China in the China's space station? Well, yes, this is a very, uh, this is a fascinating uh, situation. And, and I must say that first of all, uh, uh, we are all here at the European Space Agency really looking forward to the launch at the end of this week of the Tianhe module because it's something fantastic and, and uh, really a, a great step for, for us all. And we're all in this adventure, although we're just following it. But we have in the, in the past at uh, ESA, we've had a very good collaboration and we actually did something because ESA is very much about international collaboration between its member states, but also outside. And uh, we have, um, we did mutual training first we 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 discussed with the chinese astronaut center with our astronaut center trying to see how what you guys are doing and what we are doing see what we can do together and then we also had and this is something which is uh, quite unique because we had uh, uh, we invited the chinese astronauts to participate in the survival training so we had a, a, something called the cave experiment which is a very difficult uh, they were under the uh, this is learning how to trust each other so they had to go through different caves and uh, they were also you had uh, chinese astronauts you had europeans uh, russian us and japan japanese astronauts all working together which was for a very nice symbolic because this is how it should be in a sense that we're all working together in outer space and, and then after that we also participated in the chinese survival uh, experiments that they, they did in in, uh, in the po hai sea um, a few years ago Dale, yeah, well, now this question it goes to you carl and um, because after the retirement of the international space station in the year 2024 uh, per, uh, at, at the at that time there would be immediate transition from the ISS to the China space station because we know that in a lot of the science fiction films uh, even from the United States they mentioned about the uh, 
China's Tiangong. And there, there would be a little period for there is only one space station in space orbiting the Earth. So what do you think? the difference between the China Space Station and the ISS? Uh, the, uh, the International Space Station comes from a, in, a, a different period. In a sense, it's an interesting project because it was a, from the beginning, from the outset, it was a very geopolitical project between the, the former U Soviet Union, when at the breakup of the Soviet Union, and between the United States. And it was the idea to find something to work on together. So, and the, out of this came the ISS. So the ISS has a, perhaps, uh, uh, has a geopolitical con uh, context. Um, and um, we are, so we have five partners in the ISS and we're all discussing together what will be, what we will do. And, and for the moment, of course, the date 2024 is something that we will have to assess again if it's if it will be dismantled or if it will can continue this depends of course on the situation of the hardware which is on board whether we can continue but in the in the long end of course uh the chinese space station will be the only one which is in low earth orbit uh for the foreseeable future now this question is to ian song uh, the, uh, we know that the uh, the Russia has announced that after the retirement of the, uh, the, the International Space Station, the Russia is going to launch its own. But how long does it take for the countries to develop the their own the individual space station of their own, or is it a possible way for the international community to work together to work on a single piece of the the joint space station? Well, I think uh, Russia is the first country that have launched the uh, space station into orbit. Uh, the previously Mir station or Peace station uh, that has been operated more than 20 years, and also it was very robust and has had some accidents also occurred during the operation. So they ha they have the expertise and the experiences of uh, building uh, a station by themselves. It is the issue whether they want to build a state-of-the-art technology uh, uh, station or the purpose of that station, whether it's going to be a multi-purpose uh, platform, whether it's going to be a, a, a station that can also be connected and disconnected with other stations. Mm. Uh, these are uh, uh, things that they are in, in mind uh, for their design. Of course, the International Space Station will be uh, reassessed, whether it's going to be uh, retired or commercialized by 2024. Uh, and, and nations with space uh, uh, ambitions want to have their own facilities to guarantee the sustainability of their experiments mm. and their presence in orbit. Mm. So in the future, there are many possibilities and the promising future for, the, for each one of the country and mm. also the joint future. And back to you, Cal. Uh, I, we know that during the past few days, and a lot of countries have joined in a, in a common mission addressing the climate change because China and EU is, has been working on the satellite and also including the country in France and China France the oceanic satellite is a, as an effort to combat the climate change so what is the current status of this satellite uh, yeah, I, 